Today we're going to discuss uh, how to hopefully use the Hardy Weinberg equation. Uh, typically, what students get thrown off on is what it's used for. All right, so uh, what the Hardy Weinberg equation is used for is to compare original allele frequencies in a past population and compare that to the allele frequencies we see in a current population. Now, remember, there's that word from last unit, allele. That's dealing with different versions of a trait. So it can be a recessive allele or it could be a dominant allele. And how we use this information is if we compare the original population and find that the frequency of the original populations and the current population are not the same, we can say that those populations are evolving. Now remember, we're dealing with small changes here, not large changes. So some, this is something called microevolution. Uh, there are two equations to help us determine the allele frequency in a population. Uh, the, one of those equations is p plus q equals 1, and p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1. All right, so those are two different equations, and they're used for two different things. So let's take a look at the first one. In a typical example, right, you want to make sure to find the recessive genotype first. Right? Typically, the problems will always tell you what trait is recessive. Right, so that's going to be your q squared. Now, you want to work with q squared first because just like in um, regular dominant recessive phenotypes, a dominant phenotype could have homozygous dominant or they could be heterozygous and they could show the exact same phenotype. There is only one phenotype and only one genotype for the recessive. That's why we want to work there first. Okay, so if you have a, if you are given the recessive genotype, you want to use this equation right here. Okay. If you say that your recessive phenotype, if you are given the recessive genotype, you can square it to find Q, plug that back in, and now you can get P from there. After that, you just plug your numbers into the equation, and you can find the frequency of 2PQ. Now remember, your 2PQ is just the frequency of heterozygotes in a population. So let's go ahead and kind of take a look at some of these. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at, at this one, this example. In a population of 100 cats, there are 84 black and 16 white. Now let's go ahead and assume that black is the dominant genotype and that there are 16 white, which is the recessive. So our Q squared, right, are the population of recessive, because we want to start with that first, because we know for sure their genotype is going to be 16 out of 100 or 0.16. From there, you can use the p plus q equals 1 to determine each one. So I would go ahead and square my square root my 0.16, and that's you get 0.4. So that the total allele frequency in the population, there are 40% of the recessive alleles. They could be in the heterozygous, or they could be in the recessive phenotype. Now, what you can do, since I have Q, again, you can find that P, you can now find the frequency of the dominant allele. All right, so I can do 1 minus that. That's the equation just kind of manipulated through algebra, that there's 60% dominant genes in the population. And what you can do there is now that you can plug it into our equation, P squared plus 2PQ equals Q squared. So let's go ahead and find this, right? My dominant trait, that's my p. If I go ahead and square that, 0.6 times 0.6, it's now 0.36, right? So a homozygous dominant in the population of these cats are going to be 36%. Let's go ahead and do heterozygous, right? 2 times p times q. Those are ones I've already found here. So 2 times 0.4 times 0.6 is 48% are going to be the heterozygous genotype. And if I look, if I want to find the number of recessive, well, that was already given, but you can kind of double check your work and say, hey, 0. 0.4 times 0. 0.4, that'd be Q squared, equals 16%. That's which are 2PQ, they have a frequency of 48%, and my recessive phenotype, my Q squared, is 16%. If you were to look at a sample population after this and compare them, and find that this population, 
my homozygous dominant, my, my P squared is now 74%, my heterozygous is now 10%, and my recessive is now 16%, you can see that these two change, right? So you can say that overall that population is evolving. Now note there are still the same three different phenotypes. However, the frequency of them have changed. And if the allele frequencies are changing over time, the genetics, the population is slowly changing over time. Let's go ahead and take a look at an actual problem. Uh, this should be number three in one of your practice activities. Uh, population of birds contains 16 animals with the red tail feathers and 34 animals with blue tail feathers. It tells you that blue tails are the dominant trait. Okay, so for our first step, always kind of figure out the total number of organisms because that's important. So let's meet your 16 plus 34. So I'm working with 15 birds here. Okay, for letter A, it asks, what's the frequency of the red allele, right? So the red allele is the recessive. Okay, so remember the recessive is Q squared, right? So in order to figure that out, you do your recessive, which is 16 out of the total. And that means 32% represents your recessive allele. In order to figure out the Q itself, all you simply do is square root it. So you get Q equals 0.57. For letter B, it asks, what's the frequency of the blue allele? For the blue allele, here's where that simple equation comes in. You already know Q, and you know that one equals Q plus p. So all you do is subtract 1 from the 0.57 and you find the frequency of the dominant allele is 43%. If you want to calculate the frequency of heterozygous individuals, that's where your 2pq comes into play. So you need to find each letter first. You need to find the frequency of the recessive, meaning q, and the frequency of the dominant, meaning p. Right. So you take your 2p, q, multiply that together, and you have 49% of those individuals in the population would be considered heterozygous genotype. If for letter D, you wanna find the frequency of those birds that are homozygous for the blue allele, right? So you can call that big B, big B, if that's what we're using here. Here's where you get the P squared, right? So the point 43, which is our P, 0.43 squared is 18% of those individuals would be considered homozygous dominant because blue was a dominant trait. If you wanted to go one step further, which it doesn't talk about, uh, but from there, you already calculated the homozygous dominant, you already calculated the frequency of the heterozygous, you would be able to determine the frequency of the red alleled individuals.